Hello guys, welcome to Ride AP The Ride Show channel. My name is Serge and in today's video I want to talk to you guys a little bit. Something interesting has happened uh, today. Um, I purchased myself a Range Rover. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so happy about it, but somehow I am. It's a Land Rover, Range Rover Sport uh, HSE model. It cost $80,000 brand new, but guess how much I paid for it? 3000 I think like $38, something like that. Plus some auction fees and this and that, but hey, who's counting? I mean, $80,000 vehicle for this amount. Now, like always, I buy cars sight unseen, and this one's no different. It's a 2006 model with 4.4 uh, engine, which is actually highly desirable because Funny, funny story is most Range Rovers up until then, uh, to, like up until like 2005, they were using the BMW engine, which I drive a BMW. You would think I would want that, but no, that's that's <laughs> for Range Rover. That's just unreliable at all. And it is a sad day in the world when the Jaguar engine is the most reliable, which this happens to be the engine uh, which is by Jaguar and. That is the most reliable out of the Range Rovers. The 4.4 liter V8, it's not that fuel efficient. It's between, um, well, it's 12 city, 17 highway. So about 14 miles per gallon. But listen, if you're buying a Range Rover or a Hummer or whatever you're buying, right? Are you, for $80,000, are you even concerned with fuel economy? Because obviously you could afford it, right? Um, so, I was thinking about using this as a weekend car, personally. Um, I don't know if I should try using it for Uber or Lyft, but I actually think it's completely pointless. Um, first of all, that car is actually very nice. I love it. It's got black wheels. I don't know what size they are, but they look like their original Range Rover wheels, except they're black. They, they look like that. They might be aftermarket. I'm not sure, but they look actually really cool, and they look kind of big. They're either like 19 or 20 inch, but who knows. I'm actually going to be picking it up on Monday out of all days. It says run and drive and it is a clean title, which is already good. Now, the transmission on the other hand is not that reliable, um, but the cool news is it's the same transmission that's used in Austin Martins. So it's like, okay, I'm like James Bond driving a Range Rover now, um, but but anyways, <laughs> cool fact out of the way, obviously, it could get a little bit pricey. Um, some of the things that fail on, on the transmission cost roughly $2,500 for that part when it fails. I'm not going to say what it is because it's kind of pointless at this point. But the whole entire transmission costs $5,000. Now, me being me, who I am, being a mechanic, you know, I would attempt to fix anything. Attempt fix it i'll fix anything uh wrong with that range rover i'll just buy the parts and fix it myself and um but let's say worse come to worse right and we have to worry about the transmission well i'll just probably buy a whole transmission for five thousand dollars because i think look buying a brand new transmission and if the engine is good it's got 153,000 miles on it clean title which i already mentioned but let's say I don't use it for Uber and Lyft. That car is gonna let the, like it's gonna take a while to like rake rake up all the miles on it. But you know what? Um, like always, I am highly optimistic, and I think that I'm gonna get lucky, um, and probably everything is okay. But I don't have any illusions. <laughs> I like to have them because it's a, it's a good way to live, but there is a very good chance there's, some, that's, it, there's something wrong with it. They don't say it is, but it probably is. Uh, I've bought cars that says run and drive and they're barely even crawling. So there's a high likelihood there's something wrong with that transmission. You know, just saying. It's, um, and uh, the, the Range Rover actually, according to Kelly Blue Book, as cool factor as it sounds right like it doesn't it's not that expensive um it's say you were from five to seven thousand dollars um i've seen somebody selling one a 2006 same one 
and, and oh yeah and this is a Range Rover Sport so so smaller of the Range Rover so it's kind of you know highly desirable but anyways somebody's selling one for with 300,000 miles for $7,500 and they're calling it a great deal and it doesn't even appear to be in as good of a shape as the one that I'm getting but now I'm looking at the pictures and the pictures are not that clear so uh, you know there might be some wear and tear but I'm not sure how many people own it or have owned it in the past because um, if it's a one owner car that, that would be best and the reason that one owner cars are best is because one owner bought it for eighty thousand dollars and he's gonna treat it like it's eighty thousand dollar car even though it's five you know he's gonna take care of it it's always gonna be serviced and everything like that but once it changes hands that goes out the window because somebody's trying to be cool in the Range Rover and they just dilapidate it until they can't dilapidate it no more and, and by dilapidating means they don't take care of it I'm just using that word it's used in housing I'm using it for a car but once a person can't afford to fix it anymore guess where the cards are car auction and then somebody like me buys it because I usually buy somebody else's headaches and then I'm gonna have a headache trying to fix it um, but with that being said I'm excited about it I'm excited about it because I always wanted a Range Rover or like a G-Wagon um, I think that square body shape is a little bit in style now look at the new Broncos coming out you know look look at uh, the Rivian shoot look at Tesla Cybertruck like everything's squarey boxy right now and Range Rover is no different I mean it's got some nice styling guys this particular one can go over two feet of water and it's four by four off-road like always on four by four probably why the fuel economy is not so good but that is a nice off-roading vehicle and uh, if it's got a tow hitch that's only a plus because I got a jet ski and you know it I'll be hooking up a jet ski and you know taking it to our lake because we live right down the street from the lake uh, with boat ramps and everything so I think that would be cool and also recently I purchased myself a go-kart that cost $2,300 but I paid $1,600 for plus taxes and a scooter that cost like $850 everything by Segway and I'm thinking cool I'll have a trunk to put my goat cart in there so I could take my Range Rover to the park with my kids and we could have fun with, with some toys I guess you know so that would be interesting but let me know if you would consider using a Range Rover for doing Uber or Lyft or if you are using one for Uber and Lyft because I don't think nothing about it screams special like you're not gonna get any special treatment that's for sure because even though it's an SUV it is only a five-seater so I don't think Excel qualifies at that point so that's gonna be useless and knowing how expensive it is to service a Range Rover BMW is no different no different but it's very expensive to service them and they're paying us peanuts here um, so it's gonna be quite expensive but you know why actually I might I might just name this video like this technically if you think about it um, the price the win price well the buy now price I didn't have to win it the buy now like anybody could have bought it but I'm the only idiot that was dumb enough to buy it so it was listed for $2,500 buy now and it was a dealer only item like you just can't get in there and buy it if you're public it's, it has to be done by dealer so it's up by now and I'm like okay run and drive um, yeah yeah so what I, what I mean by that is cost $2,500 for a dealer and then there's all these taxes and fees it comes comes a about to be uh depending depending on uh, like how it's bought but right around i think like three thousand thirty eight something like that um for the dealer price but i don't have a dealer license yet so i had to pay the dealer in order to get it so it's costing me roughly about um thirty two hundred dollars just kind of like all said and done now it may cost me additional money to get it towed to my place it says run and drive but you know what i bought so many cars from there and i just don't even trust them anymore 
I think I might be in for a surprise. I mean, looking at the dash, it said coolant level low. And that could be a pretty bad. I think that's what it said. That could mean head gasket. Yeah. So that could not, that might not be fun, but it says run and drive, but I don't know. My BMW leaks coolant as well. Low coolant light will show up if you uh, don't, you know, uh, fill it up and stuff. I've been meaning to change it. I got the water bottle. Um, I just been adding water, but I already have enough headache as it is. I gotta do so much service as BMW. I actually just ordered all the struts and shocks for it because that needs to be done. Like really, like that really needs to be done now. And, uh, and then I first, I gotta change out the water bottle. And once I get that done, I gotta get around and change uh, the, um, change the, valve cover gasket uh it's leaking oil and there's these other gaskets that's called like a mickey mouse gasket it might be slang for for the oil gasket that's leaking as well um so it means i have to change that um uh, those things i have to get to them but i've been losing about a quart of oil every three to four days it is normal for a bmw to actually lose that much oil but i'm driving 1500 miles in those three days um i know it's like i said like i'm averaging about 400 miles a day but lately i've been averaging about 500 miles a day uh that's because of all the commuting commuting that i'm doing so uh right now i have 244,859 miles on this bmw and i think it served me well because i bought it with 193,000 miles again 2500 bucks so literally this bmw cost me similar price to the range rover and somebody gave up on it they had a major oil leak i fixed it and i'd say i've been quite lucky you know everybody that gets in they're like well nice car you know and uh they enjoy it i enjoy it i feel comfortable in here i think i'm gonna continue using a bmw just because it really served me well but with all that being said i was at the auction just keeping my eye out, eye out. I'm thinking like, what can I buy? Is there like another luxury vehicle? I don't have to be specific. It doesn't have to be specifically BMW, but it does need to be luxury. Maybe like a Lexus, either BMW, Audi, Mercedes, um, possibly something else in luxury, but I really don't want to uh, go outside of that. Uh, maybe in a, like an Acura that would work too. Something that could be, I'd say like 2017 and up that I could pay cash for and I could optimize my earnings. Hopefully it could be black, but if it's not black, I'll wrap it black. And and then I could use it on the lift platform uh, for the black service, because it's very hard to get an Uber's platform to be black. It's not that hard, but it's just, it's just annoying. You gotta get all this, you know, like licenses and stuff, which is fine, it's just fine. Just pay your dues and you're done. But then, you have to have commercial insurance policy now and you have to have a four hire tag in your vehicle and all those things are kind of like extra expenses you know they they really i think i think they're really overrated unless you're making a career out of being an uber driver then yeah you would want to just go out and do black do the best you can to maximize your time you know that kind of thing but what comes to my mind is this guys i literally worked two weeks and i made enough money to seriously buy this range rover enough money in two weeks and you know what guys that is a very good thought because think about it i hustled like crazy right i worked it's probably it's probably not as crazy as it could get but i worked very hard so in two weeks i'm able to just clean money clean profit because i was putting putting away $1,500 a, a week still doing that by the way um and I'm thinking okay I'll just buy this Range Rover here because it came up for sale and I'm like you know what I always wanted one oh yeah it's white by by the way and I'm thinking like no I really don't want to use this for Uber doesn't make sense but you know what it makes sense for me to use it for guys is doing real estate one thing that this Range Rover does for you uh, as uh, somebody that 
drives it. First of all, it's gonna make you feel like a million bucks when you're driving it. Same with the BMW. This BMW is quite luxurious for 2010. They're very comfortable cars. It makes you feel like you achieved something even if you really did not. Um, because somebody achieved something and they bought that Range Rover for 80,000 bucks, put even more money in service and maybe some of it was part of the warranty. But then you end up picking it up and you did not achieve anything, but you look like a high achiever in the Range Rover, which could help you in case you're trying to achieve something. Let's say you're on your way to making some money, right? Like you want to look professional. You don't want to look like you're not a professional. You know, you want to look like you got some money. Yeah, then you would want to drive a Range Rover. You want to have a nice watch on. You know, you want to look nice. Look, I'm dressing nice. I don't have to, but I dress nice because of how it makes me feel. It makes me feel a little bit more professional to the clients and they appreciate it too, which sometimes results in better tips. But with that being said, when it comes to being a professional, what am I going to use a Range Rover for that is going to make me look professional? Real estate guys. And I know recently I've been talking about how I'm going to be buying a shop. I'll explain to you guys in a few little words why I will not buy the shop. I decided not to have debts, but it's bigger than that. Uh, because I want something that builds me up, not tears me down. You know what I mean? Even though in the shop I could make good money, I will not become a millionaire. And... I want to become a millionaire. I literally want to become a millionaire. I don't have the need for it, but I want to because I love money and I want to make as much of it as possible. So I want to get into luxury real estate and by having a Range Rover, it's going to allow me to present myself with high value clients that I'm on the same level as them or at least not below their level and uh, it's gonna make me look successful even though I, I maybe have not experienced that much success. Uh, but guys, I made with Uber 102,000 this year and 117,000 last year. So, uh, success. That's successful for some people, you know. I wanna grow further, but most people only make about $40,000 a year. That's it, that's all they make. So, make it 100, thousand a year that means you're making two and a half times more than somebody else out there and I always want to be able to grow that's what I'm trying to do so so the thing is I'm thinking like this I just want to put this out there I was like thinking like this guys I'm 42 years old in 18 years I will be 60 years old at 60 years old, I could imagine that I'm not going to feel like replacing a transmission in the car. You know what I mean? And at 60 years old, I would have wanted or wished that I would have established myself a little bit more professionally and have some kind of career going for myself, you know? Even though I kind of doing pretty good right now, but career, because stuff that I'm doing right now is hobbies. Like, it's just hobbies. Me buy like that's my 34th car I bought, guys. I could buy more. I have money for more. But I'm always on a lookout. I'm like, I'm just like looking. I don't have because I know like I don't have to, but if it's something cool, I want it. I get it. Um so what I want to do is I want to become a real estate investor. And before becoming a real estate investor, because I already kind of am because I already bought two investment properties for cash, and I'm gonna continue that trend. There's a way that I could do it where I could buy lots of homes, but that's gonna come later on. But I'm thinking I wanna learn everything there is about real estate. I'm talking about law, everything there is to know. And it's hard. I already took a North Carolina school and then I stopped right about as I was about to be finished. I stopped and it expired. Then I started taking South Carolina school and then I stopped and it expired. Now I have to get my, my uh, schooling back in there so I can get my South Carolina license and get my North Carolina license after that. But I started having a little bit of a second thoughts and I put real estate in pause because we have right now interest rates, they're going up and it's a lot more expensive, but Charlotte is still growing. So despite everything, Charlotte's gonna continue to grow in uh, right now, lots of real estate agents, they're gonna quit probably about 40% to 50% of the agents is gonna quit because there's not a lot of money to go around 
And I kind of thought about this and I'm thinking, is it really the best time to get into real estate right now? And I was thinking, I, I probably should need to focus on my life and fix a few things, this and that. And I've done that to a degree. And I'm thinking, well, what's next for me? Okay, what's next? Maybe a shop so I could like start my dealership. I do have a commercial zone property where I can start a dealership. But I was kind of thinking, well, that will mean people are coming to my house technically because the properties are next door. Even though the dealership would be way in the front and my property is way in the back because there's two properties next door. So one property is like way in the back. One property is way in the front. You know what I mean? Like the building, like the garage on the commercial zone property is way in the front. And in a way I have a fence there like and technically if somebody comes like you can't see me, you know? But I'm kind of thinking if I bought a shop that would mean that customers would come to the shop I could still live a good life where nobody's coming to my house but then I started thinking I bought this property that I have with the last money that I had in my life like that was the only money I had, I had and I bought it for cash and I'm thinking okay well I feel good that I have it but if I become more successful even if my regular type of property I will be able to buy another property like I'm talking about like a residential property this time buying a property that I could flip and keep flipping I'm gonna tell you guys something in a few words this might be very hard for you to understand but there is a, a way not to pay taxes when you buy when you sell homes without having to wait the two years or the one year mark you could actually buy the home and flip it right away if you're using 1031 exchange, I'm not gonna go into it, but what that really means is you can, as long as you sell your house and you are buying another house with that money, another real estate property, it could be anything, land, any kind of real estate, it could even be a golf course or apartment complexes or like a hotel. As long as you buy another property with that money, then you will not be taxed on that money. But in order to have that done, it's a pretty pretty complicated thing. You need to hire a fiduciary and make sure you do all your due diligence and make sure you know what you're doing because you want to make sure you do it correctly. Not, well, you'll have to pay taxes. But uh, some people think that doesn't work. Yes, it does work. It still works today. It's called 1031 exchange. So if I save up enough cash, and this is what I started thinking to myself right now. Like, I want to tell you guys, and I know this is like a problem. Well, let me just record a separate video on this because this video is getting too long. But let me tell you about how I'm planning to become a millionaire by being a real estate agent. Um, I'm going to tell you like my plan and feel free to tell me if I have a good plan or not. But all in all, I'll tell you this. I decided to become a real estate agent so I could become a real estate investor so that I could become a millionaire and serve myself well on all those sizes. But in the next video, let me put everything together for you. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care of yourself and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.